This is Grave Confessions from the Grave Talks. Daily, raw, real, and disturbing accounts of the living, interacting with the dead. To share your grave confession, experience with the paranormal, supernatural, or the undead, call toll-free 888-GHOST-13. That's 888-446-7813. Now, today's grave confession. My name's Lydia. Love your show. Um, So I'll tell you what happened. Um, So my college is... It's old, but there are plenty, you know, like new buildings here. And um, in one of the buildings that I'm in, it's it's probably like 20, 30 years old. It's not that old for someone to be like, you know, supposedly haunted. But um, what happened was um, my professor, um, we have a class where we weld metals. It's called principal fabrication. It's really fun. We're going to start getting into wood would work but anyways my professor was like hey i didn't grade your welding project could you bring it to to the lab so i can grade it and i said sure because i realized i brought it back to my my dorm um before he graded it because i supposedly thought he did so it was probably like sunday like 4 30 in the afternoon and so i walk into his lab and i'm, I'm pretty light on my feet like it was i'm pretty quiet and I came up and I tapped his shoulder and he jumped when I did that. And I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. And he's like, no, it's okay. Um, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I'm pretty sure this place is haunted. And I kind of gave him a look because I'm skeptical. I do believe in the stuff. I try to think in a realistic, like, you know, mindset instead of assuming like, Oh my God, there's a ghost. <laughs> so, um, I was like, okay, well, what do you mean by that? Like, what, what, what makes you think that? He's like, well, um, the lights will flicker, and I would hear something walking around, and sometimes the radio would turn on by itself, and the toilets would flush, and the sinks would turn on, doors would open and close, and I'm like thinking, okay. So I asked him, like, well, do you do you feel like you know why it is or is, was this just so sudden? He's like, well, a man did die here back in like the fifties. Um, his name was Todd. He was the old professor. Um, like he had the same, you know, job that I did. Um, but the story goes that he went into the wood shop to go turn on the lights and prepare for the day for his students. And he suddenly just died of a heart attack and he just collapsed and died. And I will be honest, we, when we were doing, you know, metal arc welding and whatnot, we were in a different room, but we would all put our book, our book bags in the wood shop. And some days when I come in there a little earlier than others and I'm by myself, I felt weird in the room. In some sense, I feel like it has some senses to the paranormal, but because I've had weird stuff happen to me, but it's not like strong enough to where I can no, like there is something here. I just felt weird. No one else felt weird and had asked before. I'm like, do you ever feel weird in this room? They're like, no. So I'm like, okay. So I try to ignore it. And now that I'm aware of what's happened and it's in the same room where this man supposedly died, I'm like, oh, well, this all kind of clicks together. This is what's going on. So um, that was Michael's story. And my other professor, Hunter, he... You know, he's like, so Michael told you about Todd? I said, yes, he did. He's like, oh, yeah, he said you're into that stuff. I said, yeah, well, I find it interesting, but I'm not, like, you know, going to go crazy and want to, like, ghost hunt or anything. It's just I find it intriguing, like, wow, this is what's going on. He's like, well, I will tell you how weird stuff happened to me, and I've ran out of here a few times. And mind you, these – I'm in – my major is involved with agriculture, and these are full-ass grown men – saying that they are scared. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, there's something happening here. Um, So Hunter was like, yeah, it was Christmas Eve one night and I was making my son's gifts and I heard a bunch of commotion down the lab. So I went downstairs and I called out to Michael and this talking stopped. And I looked around and I saw nothing. There was nobody here and I didn't care. I, I, for, I left my son's kids in the in the office and I ran out and I went home. I was freaked out. 
and he said that he would see faces in the in the windows or uh, in the glass doors, weird stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, that's so weird. But I got so excited. I'm like, this is so interesting because, you know, this is this is like this is not an old building, and there's stuff happening in it. I just find that really crazy. So. Because, you know, like, you know, usually it's always in, like, an old Victorian, like, 1700s type home. There's stuff going on, of course. But this building's, like, probably made in the, you know, the 50s. So we were doing something with sheet metal, and me and two other girls were wanting to make stars. So Hunter took us in the wood shop because everybody else wanted to make a, a dustpan. So he was showing us how to do it, and... While he was talking, something collapsed upstairs. And we all looked up, and my friend next to me was like, what was that? And he looked at me, he's like, I think it's Todd. And both girls were like, what? Who's Todd? Who's Todd? And then he explained it to them. And throughout the day when he left, and we would kind of, you know, run back and forth to the thing where we're cutting our sheet metal. Um, Jasmine, my friend, she came to me later when I was cutting my metal and she's like, I'm hearing stuff. I said, what do you mean? She's like, well, I'm hearing something, you know, walking back and forth. And I told her, I'm like, I wouldn't worry about it. If you keep thinking about it, then you're probably going to get, you know, your mind's going to play tricks on you. So just don't think about it. Okay. Cause like, I do believe this stuff, but whenever you get panicked by something happening, your mind plays tricks on you. And then you assume it is a ghost. So I try to stay like, you know, calm and, you know, just ignore it because if you keep giving it attention, you're just going to mess with your own brain and this thing is going to want to play around with you if it's like that. So she ignored it. But then when I was alone and me and this other girl was alone, she started hearing it, but I knew I was hearing it, but I didn't want to say anything because I'm like, maybe I'm overthinking it. She's like, please tell me you're hearing this too. And I said, yeah, I am. (laughs) So it was crazy. But, um, yeah, that happened the other day. And Michael wonders if maybe Todd is trying to gain contact with him because this, this, this thing is, like, turning on the radio, flickering the lights. And I'm like, well, he could be, but I wouldn't, you know, mess around with that type of stuff if you're trying to get, in, in, you know, in communication with him. He's like, well... What if I used a Ouija board? And I was like, I just literally said to him, like, no, do not use a Ouija board. Because from listening to y'all's podcast and watching enough, like, ghost hunting shows, I know for a fact a Ouija board is not going to get you anywhere. It's just going to bring a lot of bad juju into your place. So he did a question it, and he just said, okay. And I said, I'm like, if you really want to get into contact with him, I would just get, like, you know, I forget what they're called. Those things, those communication boxes, like, that you can have the spirits, like, you know get into and like talk to you or whatever. But I was telling them like, just get like real materials that ghost ghost hunters use and you can probably get into communication with them. So that was that. Um, But sometimes I feel like there's some, there's something in my dorm. It's a little side story, but it was fall break and I stayed at the university because I had to go home for COVID and it wasn't that long ago. So when fall break came up, my parents were like, you already saw us. And it's just basically going to be two days for you to hang out with us and you have to go back. So just stay there. I was like, okay. My doormates and my roommate went home. The whole entire floor is empty because everybody decided to go home. And I was on the phone with my mom. And let me tell you, I didn't shower for a couple of days. The shower is dry. Keep that in mind. And I was talking to her and my shampoo bottle fell. Now, my mom assumes that I misplaced it, but I'm like, well, how could it fall after two days of it sitting there? Like, that's not possible. Like, from the law of physics, that's not possible for that to happen. So she's like, I don't know, but she's she's thinking I'm overthinking it. But I thought that was a little strange, but I try to, you know, put that to the side. But then recently, I was just in the bathroom, you know, putting on my contacts, you know, taking my medicine, and I heard the shower curtain jingle the thing the hooks are holding the curtain it was jingling so I looked into the um actual bathroom itself and I was like weird so I went in and I'm feeling the air trying to see if it was the draft and it that that couldn't have happened so 
I don't know if it's something else or maybe Todd's like following me, but I don't think it is because I'm not opening myself up to where he could, where this thing could attach me, but maybe it could be my grandfather. I don't know what it is, but it's freaky. And these things don't happen often. So rarely something would happen, but it's mainly in the bathroom. So anyways, I don't know. A lot of random mumbo jumbo. Um, hope it gets on the air. Um, I have a lot more stories that have happened to me and my family. If you ever want to hear them, I will call back. So yeah, y'all have a great day. Bye. This has been a grave confession from the grave talks to share your grave confession experience with the paranormal or the undead. Call toll free 888 ghost 13. That's 888 446 7813.